Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Art of Creation show. I'm your host, Rebecca Boswell, and today I'm joined by Graham, Graham Crossgill yes. and the topic of <laughs> trusting you in business. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, as in every episode, we are really looking at how choice creates, that choice creates, and digging up and into different possibilities um, for creating a life and a living that can actually work for you, whatever that is for you. So, as always, eat the fish, spit out the bones, and hopefully there will be a lot of fish here for you. So, <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, Graham, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Um when I asked Graham how he would like to be introduced, um, he did express he his preference is with fireworks and fairies. So um, in lieu of fireworks and fairies, uh, I will say I am totally grateful for you being here. And, uh, and there are actually fireworks going off in my world because I have been following you and watching uh, what you are creating in the world. And it is really, really cool and really fun. And I think that there are a lot of people who are going to find this episode and get some really juicy tidbits. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you. This is very exciting. So, <laughs> so those are the fireworks for you. And of course, the fairies are always contributing. So hopefully they just won't create any too much mischief yes. while we're here <laughs> today. <laughs> Behave yourselves. <laughs> yes. So, Graham, you are um, another globe-trotting um, business being of magnitude. You're, um, you have a really interesting story, and uh, I was wondering if, we, wondering if we could start out um, with just a little bit of your background and uh, how you got to be doing what it is that you're doing today, and tell us a little bit more about what that actually is. <laughs> That's a great question, because I've actually just started writing like my redoing my website and I'm like been looking at w w how did I get to where I am you know and um, so good timing um, and yes thank you so much for the invite like super grateful and it's really nice to be here um, yeah so like we mentioned you know I was I was born in South Africa and um, I actually was born I, I was born in the 80s so I grew up at the end of the apartheid era and then through the like a big change you know so it's been a real interesting upbringing and um kind of it like in the environment that i grew up in you know you either had to there was no support like you had to really get your a into g and make life happen um because there's no sort of there wasn't really a system of like hey guys here's like a grant or here's whatever you know so that that entrepreneurial spirit has kind of been there all the time and um really the short way of getting to how i became an access facilitator was just through many failures of business and many unhappy years of life and living as most of us go through um and i just heard like one quote which was before access actually and it was you are where you want to be Right, and that I heard that when I was fifteen, and that struck me so deeply, um, and that kind of like started the, you know, the sparks in my world that just got me to okay, cool. Then if I am where I'm, where I want to be, this is not really what I wanted to be like. So what else is possible, you know? Um, yeah. And I just drove from there, and then I phoned my mom one day. This is years later after a whole bunch of stuff, and I phoned my mom one day. Just again, like in a business that I'm not enjoying, not working out as great as I'd like it to. And she was like, you know what? I've just learned this new thing, which is the clearing statement. And she emailed it to me. And she's like, just say this a few times and see if it helps. And that was it. I was in. I was like, bang. Okay, cool. Game on. <laughs> yeah. So that's like a little short. Cool. Yeah, brief. <laughs> So you had, um, so you had a mom who was already playing with some energetic tools and some different ways of looking at the world that you were able to tap into. Yeah, you know, um, so she was a body talk facilitator or a body talk practitioner or something, and it was interesting because she really kind of was a part of like you know the power nineties where it was all about positive thinking and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, I grew up, it was just me and my mom. Um, so I kind of got influenced by that. And she's actually, an, is the sound all right? Is it all good? The sound? Yeah, it is. Um, I just was going to try these um, other headphones, but they don't work. No, you're good. Yeah, am I good? Yeah. So, you know, so I really kind of got influenced in that. And that's where I heard that quote, you are where you want to be. Um, because she kind of just like would leave books lying around and then, you know, I'd end up reading them and stuff like that. And actually since then, like since I was 15, I got into the whole spiritual metaphysical, you know, re Reiki and reflexology and all that. So I kind of was just in that already. Um, but yeah, you know, once I'd found access, it was really interesting because I remember years ago going, looking at my mom going, oh my God, could you imagine doing sessions all day and helping people? Are you crazy? <laughs> and then access got me. <laughs> And then it got you. That's so cool. Yeah. So, um, so doing facilitating, offering online programs, and and helping people to clear energies that are blocking them. Or how would you describe what you do? Yeah, you you know, I would, I, for me, I find the platform of business and entrepreneurship to be the way that I can use the tools and process the tools and. And it, it's a guide for me to really get awareness and consciousness and, and all that. Um, and since I've always just really had an entrepreneurial, like this vibe of just, I just love it. Like, I don't know why it's a crazy thing. Um, Gary asked me one day, why do you want to help entrepreneurs? And I said, because it's fun. And then he told me I was weird. So, <laughs> you know, it's just a part of what we be. And so I like, yeah, I do a lot of online stuff and I do um, business classes and entrepreneur classes and money classes. Um, and I deliver the tools of access through that, that platform, that, that medium. Yeah. Cool. And is everything, are you working um, only with access tools or are you also incorporating other things that you've picked up along the way? And, um, or are you really, are you, how do you, how do you um, work with, with with your different tools and yeah i i must say I, I i champion the tools of access um you know with pretty much everything that i do so for sure i have you know experiences and, and things that i use to my advantage but in terms of getting the changes and getting the the energies changed and the possibilities to people absolutely access is the way i do it yeah cool yeah cool so, and, and you have your website that you're uh, revamping now. So people who are not familiar with access or the tools, really more the tools yes. that you're using, the body of work that you're tapping into, um, they can find more there, I'm sure, once that is up. Yeah. Um, so trusting you in business, working with <laughs> entrepreneurs sounds like is your sweet spot. Um, so where, where are, you know, what, first of all, what even brought you to um, want to work with entrepreneurs and realize that trusting themselves in business is a hot topic? Yeah, uh, good question. You know, just my personal point of view is if I look at history, entrepreneurs are who have shaped the planet. You know, we, we're the ones that really um, are the innovators and the creators. Um, and unfortunately, what's happened is uh, business has become a destructive source on the planet rather than a creative source in most circumstances, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And my personal sort of knowing is that if we have conscious entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that are here for, you know, the planet, the greater for everyone, um, not only can we have a really brilliant future, but you know, there's that possibility of a joyful future and a, and a, and a fun future for everyone. Um, yeah. And I've just always known it should be easier. Like it, it, you know, I've probably had about seven different businesses in several industries and some were really successful and some were like uh, failures in, in this reality. Um, I just knew there was an easier way. And I think entrepreneurship is, is one of the most creative, most inspiring ways because one, you have, to, you have to learn to be here for you. You know, there's no one, there's no one there that's going to help you out when you're not going to, you know, take action or do something that you need to do. 
Um, and a lot of people find that as a, as a negative thing, but it's actually a gift when you can start to use that to have your own back. And yeah. because once, once you get that, once you have that energy in your world, no one or nothing can take it away. You know, no, there's no situation, there's no circumstance that can be a defeat to you. It's, you've got it always. And I think that's a great energy that we all actually require and desire, whether you're an entrepreneur or not. I mean, a mom or whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. It, it's an energy that can really support so much for you. So having your own back, and so that's where, you know, how does that show up? So if someone's like, well, I think I have my back, my own back, or what does that even mean to have your own back? <laughs> can, you, can you unpack that a little bit for us just so that we can, so that everybody watching can see like where maybe they are, maybe where they aren't yes. having their own back? Yeah, yeah. So first things first, it is always a journey. Like it's so interesting, like something like having your own back and, and trusting Trusting your knowing, like, you know, is never like, oh, you finally got there. Because you just realize there's so much more of you available. Therefore, there's so much more of you that you can actually have and, you know, support. And I'll give it to you in like a little example. It's like, if you look at the question, if you look at the tool, if I had no one or nothing, what would I be? What would I do? What would I choose? What would I create? So if I had no one, or nothing. What would I be? What would I do? What would I choose? What would I create? And if you get the energy of what that is, and that is what you're creating, I would probably say then you have your own back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, you know, we really get caught up in other people's worlds and we get caught up, and you'll know, um, but we get caught up in like not hurting people or the needs of others or <clears throat> whatever it is. And that really yeah. determines a lot of our choices. So it's like, if you look at that question, okay, so if I have no one or nothing, would I be choosing this? And then you can really get the energy, okay, are you choosing this for you? Are you choosing it or you're not choosing it because you're scared or whatever? Um, so it's a really great sort of sense and guide um, to where you, where you are at that, at that moment. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting too, because when you say that, you know, sometimes it's like the, the knee jerk reaction is to think like, well, you know, what about, you know, I have a spouse, I have kids, you know, I have, I, you know, I have to do and choose these things or I can't choose those things because, and sort of what you're saying is flip it around, really look at it and you're opening up a space to acknowledge that you're choosing it. Yes. So <laughs> if you're choosing certain things because of your kids or for your kids or because of your spouse or for your spouse or because the world is the way it is, um, at least acknowledging that you're choosing that. And if it's not fully um, in alignment with who you be yeah. or what you're becoming, then getting the sense that, oh, okay, so maybe I can't get rid of my kids Maybe I can't get rid of my husband. Maybe, you know, you don't want to. <laughs> yeah. um, and what else can you choose so that it still works for you? Exactly. And you know what, what the, the interesting thing is, what, what I've really, again, and this is from, this is from me really practicing and, and, and learning and growing that muscle to trust myself, is when you start choosing for you, when, and, and it's not a, against everyone else. Like choosing for yeah. you is with everyone else. But it's also realizing that, um, how can I say it? Sometimes the world is going to perceive it like you're choosing against them and it's going to feel like that. And yeah. it actually takes a couple of months for you just to go through that energy, just like, like almost that fight and resistance that the world is going to throw at you when you actually start to honor yourself and choose for yourself and choose with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And it in the beginning, it's a little bit hard because it does feel like that. Like, oh, I'm doing it against my kids or I've got to get rid of my spouse because they're not choosing as well or whatever it is. But you know what? If, again, trust yourself that you're choosing what is going to create a greater future because not everyone can see it. And this is a part of trusting your knowing, right, is stick with it. Keep choosing it. And it will, the fabric of that energy will break and it will change 
and everything will start to change because then people will start to see what you being, what you're talking about and what you're choosing, you know, and one of the examples I give in, in my class, the symphony of business is, you know, if you take your dog out to a field, right? Like, and there's tall grass and there's a rabbit, you know, a hundred meters away. You don't know the rabbit's there, but the dog knows the rabbit's there. And he runs after the rabbit and he's jumping up and down, you know, in the grass and doing all this crazy stuff. And your friend comes up and looks at the dog and he goes, what the hell's the dog doing? Has he lost his mind? It's like, no, there's a rabbit yeah. there. But the dog's the only one. You're the only one that can see the rabbit. No one else can. Right. You know, so right. you've got to give the world time to uh, receive your possibilities. And really having that, again, that trust in your knowing is a part of just being willing to go through that energy where there will be resistance in the beginning from others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when it's, it's when you have a certain way of being with people and then that changes, yeah. there's, you know, how much programming that tells us danger, danger, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. abort mission, mayday. It, exactly. I, yeah. And you know, yeah. that, that, that energy actually is probably one of the, biggest, greatest tools um, that you can use as an entrepreneur. And, and, and let me just give you a little bit of information. When I say entrepreneur, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is if you wake up in the morning and you desire a greater reality or a greater world in any way, you are an entrepreneur because you're actually seeking something greater. So it doesn't matter what that looks like. It doesn't matter if you actually have a job or a business or whatever, that energy, that is what I'm really looking at. But Knowing that there's that abort energy that you're going to die if you choose this, the world is going to end if you choose this, is probably the indication actually that you're choosing the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's exactly that thing that's going yeah. that little step further yeah. instead of trying to get back to where it's comfy again, right? And we yeah. can be comfy in our own mess. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. And you know what? get over being comfortable it's like it, it doesn't work because i i love it because you you know you like you comfort for like two days you're like oh okay i feel better now and then and then the itch comes again you know that that little secret seeker energy that we've got deep down starts scratching at the door again going mm -mm, this isn't going to work for very long so yeah yeah be uncomfortable yeah and you know one of the things too that you mentioned um that really struck me was uh, where um, when we stop our receiving, that's when we make things hard. So like in the business context, you know, we have this sense of like work has to be hard, business has to be hard. Um, but it's actually when we're stopping our receiving and, you know, how much can we actually receive when we don't have our own back? So I wonder if we could play with this a little bit and, and you could share with us what you know about that. Yeah, it's actually brilliant because, you know, the thing that I, I've really noticed um, is when you, so people was, will support you in the energy that you're choosing, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're choosing to not trust yourself, if you're choosing not to have your own back, people will actually support the energy that will honor the, 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 the drawback, the resistance, the not trusting mm -hmm. yourself. And they will then like kind of represent that for you in a way that that's actually the right choice or the good choice. So mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like a little bit of a reverse psychology part because you think people would be there to support you and say, no, go for it. But people cannot actually support you if you cannot support yourself. Yeah. And this is the thing that I was saying. Like, so this is a part of that receiving as well. It's like if you really want to receive from other people, Trust me, L learn and play with the tool of trusting your own back, having your own back, choosing for you. And in a couple of months' time, you will have this energy where people will support you, like, no matter what. And they just have, because, yeah. because you have that energy, like, it's, un it's unshakable. You know, they just go, hey, we're going, yeah, you're coming with. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, and that really speaks to the energy of being a leader or being the leader of your own life yeah. 
And you know, this is this is where this is this is the party that I'm having, and inviting people to come, but showing up even if you don't know that anyone else will be there. Yeah. 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 And next thing you know, everybody's coming to the party because you were the one who's actually willing to show up in the first place. Well, exactly that. And, and also what you'll tend to find is that the people who have already also chosen are already there. And you end up meeting yeah. those people in the most phenomenal ways who are in the same sort of energy and head in a similar direction with you. They're kind of already there, right? So, yeah. you know, it, yeah, people will come with you, but there's also, there's already a party gone. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, true, true. All the, just because you know, and um, you know whoever you know at this moment, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean that those are going to be the people that come with you. It may actually, you know, some may come, some may not. And, uh, that's where practicing that judgment-free awareness of being aware of what people, you know, are, are ready and willing to receive and to choose yeah. and, you know, to not make anyone right or wrong for whatever that is, whether they're choosing greater absolutely. Um, than, than you are or maybe um, choosing different than what you are. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it is, look, it's, it's, it's a simple tool. But again, like none of the stuff that, you know, we're talking about is, hey, once you've got it, you've got it. There's there's this continuous engagement and evolution of it. So having allowance and, and like you say, being out of judgment of people is a continuous practice. And what really shows up is this, like you can actually, you'll get to the space where you'll have gratitude for people no matter what they choose. Yeah. You know, and, and that's a really, really, really potent space to function from. Yeah. Finding the gifts. I, I like to say finding the gifts in the garbage. Yeah. You know, at first, first sweep, it might seem like a bunch of junk. But when we actually look, you know, what is the gift here? Yeah. And, you know, if we weren't so, um, so quick to judge what was um, and actually see what is, where can we actually find the contribution and where can we actually use whatever is showing up yeah. to propel us to whatever we're creating next or choosing next. Absolutely. And that is actually, a, what you've said is actually really brilliant. And I tell you what, not a lot of people are willing to actually function from that space because again, trusting yourself, trusting your knowing, you know, trusting in your knowing is mm -hmm. also the willingness to see what is. Right. Because we are so clouded with all these filters and these judgments and these points of views and mostly what we would like it to be. Um, but that really like gives us limited choices. And when you can really be vulnerable and be in the face of what is right without a point of view. And again, practice, practice, practice. But when you with what is without a point of view, you actually get to become highly pragmatic yeah. and pragmatic is doing what works, but you, you yeah. can't be, doing what works if you're actually not looking at what's actually going on and that in itself is an art you know to look at what is yeah yeah as opposed to constantly i mean how how many how how much do we do this when we're when we're not really looking at um being present and staying in that space of awareness you know how many times do we refer back to the past or do we take whatever occurred in the past and actually overlay it onto the present or project it into the future. So we say, oh, it's always been like this. It's always going to be like this. Yeah. Um, how much of that is actually the creation that we're choosing? Um, we don't have to keep p picking up the junk from and the garbage from the past <laughs> and throwing it up into, you know, into our next steps. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, and yeah, and that, that's, um, I mean, there's so much in that, but it, it's, it's a gift. Like if, if you really want to have more ease and in your life and in business and whatever it is, it's like, yeah, you got to get over the past. It, it does, you know, no reward whatsoever, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's that thing too of like, you know, when, when people talk about having no story or rewriting their story, it's like, you know, certain things have occurred, you know, if you, sure. 
broke your leg when you were in third grade or something like that, you know, that occurred there, you know, that, that happened. Um, and everything around it is completely malleable and pliable. Yeah. So do you, do you only recall, you know, the pain and, you know, the miserable, bit, miserable bits, or, you know, do you actually recall, you know, how, how fun it was to get all your friends to write on the cast and how, you know, your parents were nicer to you than you ever were um, any other time in your life or, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's really like you have this, you have this painting and, you know, which, which, which colors are you gonna, are you gonna pluck out to, to pay attention to? Yeah. Um, that really is, is the choice. So when we look at the past, we say, well, that's how it was. It's like, okay, and um, if we were to put on a different filter or if we were open, if we were able to open up our awareness to perceive even more of that beyond just what we had zeroed in on as the only pieces of that story, yeah. um, how could that actually change our perception of a past that already occurred? How can our perception of that past, past actually contribute to and change who we are in the present and who we're becoming as we venture on into the future. Yeah, well, you, you know what, one, like one tool that I would recommend is looking at the things that, that have occurred in your life. And mm -hmm. if, you, if you are really willing to explore it, you can actually look at where you chose it and you created it. Because Everything in our life, you know, as, as a lot of us have, have worked with access, we're really getting to that, um, that awareness that choice creates and we create everything. And if you use those moments from the past and you actually use the tools to dive into it a little bit without like, you know, wrongness, but what if you could start getting to the choice points that you discover that created those situations or created the the trauma or the drama in the future from that situation and then the gift in that is you can start to acknowledge that choice creates so if choice created that in the past imagine what your choice could create in the future if you're willing to to be with that you know it, it's a really great tool yeah yeah, yeah and because when where do you want to put the setting right i want to create on trauma and drama i'd like to create on you know generation and you know joyful exuberance exactly <laughs> it's just it's just a setting it's like i am creating yeah. so now which setting would i like to amp up yeah and you, you know like i mean obviously we we know that this it's not rainbows fairies and you know unicorns every day right i mean we've got to deal with stuff and life like there's things that are going to come up that aren't going to be fun and mostly things aren't going to work out the way that you want them to i mean very very rarely that they do um, but often they can work out greater. Yes. You know, if, we, if we're willing to get out of the drama and trauma of that moment, um, you know, again, one of the things that I love to, to work with in, in my classes is, you know, every no from the, from the universe is actually the gift, right? And, yeah. and I, give an, like, I give an example, like I, I say to people, okay, like, look, take, take a client that you had six months ago or that you were potentially going to have, you know, a big client or a big project that was coming up and it actually didn't work out for you. And go and do some research and go and find out what actually happened to that project and what happened to that client. And I can guarantee you 95% of the time that project would have been hell for you or that client would have been absolutely terrible for you to work with. And the universe actually helped you out there. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah. <laughs> and maybe even your knowing, right? It's like, well, we're creating these things. And how, ma how many of the things that we say and do or even the energies that we be in the world, you know, are really creating, you know, that, that mis mismatch with the client, right? Where we actually, there is a knowing on some level, even if it's not conscious, like there is a knowing that this is going to be a hell project. And... Um, being willing to be all the energies to allow it to not be created in the way that you thought you wanted it created. Exactly. 
It's kind of brilliant, actually. Yeah, and, and what actually brings up for me on that, again, is this, is this a part of like trusting your knowing, you know, and having your own back is, um, how do I put it? It's like, if you do things because of, for the money, it's always going to end up being about the money, right? If you do it and, and you do things and you don't, and you trust your back, like you know that you're not going to, you're not going to like, die and you're not going to end up on the street because that's the that, that's the potency of this energy that you have you just know whatever it takes you'll create it you will stop doing things because of the money and you'll actually do them from your awareness knowing whether that's going to be something you actually want to do what most of us do is we do businesses projects and all that because we need the money or for someone or something else and that very rarely works out in our favor yeah. Yeah. Or even to prove something to ourselves or to others. Yeah. yeah. Well, mo you know, I, had a, um, I was at Benevolent Capitalism with Gary Douglas, whenever the first one was years ago in Australia and speaking to him about entrepreneurs and 97.5% of all entrepreneurs fail, right? Most of those entrepreneurs, 90% of them become entrepreneurs to prove that they're a failure. <laughs> that's brilliant right. so they were right yay yeah. so they were actually very successful exactly and they actually did exactly what they set out to do yeah exactly so it's like <laughs> again it's like you know and and this is it like one of the biggest questions you can ask yourself is like and be so vulnerable with this do you really truly desire to succeed like do you really want to because everyone sees the fantasy of it, like, oh, millions of rands and dollars of whatever you have and big houses and big cars. And no, there's work, you know, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more to deal with. Um, you know, there's a lot more energy. There's a lot more receiving that you have to be willing to, to get to and a lot more awareness and a lot more knowing. And, you know, so there's a lot that comes with success, but it's also joyful. <laughs> Yes, it can be. Yeah. And, and, you know, even just the word success, you know, what have we decided is success? Yeah. You know, what, you know, have, have we already built into the idea of success that it can't have joy, right? Yeah. Or it can't be fun or, you know, it has to show up in a particular way. And when we begin to let go of maybe all of those definitions or conclusions or yeah. even misconceptions, exactly, then opening up the space of like, wow, so if I actually did business my way, what would that look like? How much am I trying to do business the way I'm supposed to or the way that it's been done or, you know, the way that the industrial mindset dictates, um, for sure. you know, and it may work really well. And for those for whom it doesn't, getting out of the judgment and, um, and finding, well, what is going to work? And, and so instead of saying like, oh, well, I'm going to be an entrepreneur because I can't work for anyone, which really just translates into I am a failure <laughs> somewhere down yeah. there, or I, I don't want to fail. Yeah. You know, it's like, how can we flip all that and, and, and just acknowledge like, okay, so I have a different way of looking at the world. I have different skills and capacities. And um, yeah, what if I could be the biggest failure in terms of, making my business look like everyone else's and what is success to me and what would it take for me to become whatever requires for my business to, to be successful in that way? Yeah. Well, actually there's, there's two really cool tools or, or let's say like changes in sort of the way of looking at all this. Cause, um, so one thing just to really, really acknowledge, you know, a lot of us, who are seekers and, you know, humanoids, whatever we want to call it, um, mostly have always felt out and have felt different and that we've never fit and that there's always a, something not quite right about us in the world, right? But if you look at it, and this is what's one of the most exciting things for me about business, business is this platform where if you allow it, it will show you everywhere that you are great. Because your difference, the way you see the world and that weird thing that people used to tease you about or the things that you judge yourself so much about are actually what would allow you to succeed. 
They really, really are. And business is this platform that you can actualize your weird, wacky, crazy points of views into a, into a business of success, right? Yeah. Um, and again, that's really what you've got to do is got to ask the question, is that really what you want to be, do, or choose? And then something that I learned a few months ago, which really revolutionized my world, is I realized a lot of people get into business because they want to be successful. Because of what you were saying, they have a definition of success. And the only way for them to become successful is to be in business, have a business, or some sort of variation of that. My question to everyone is now, is what if instead of being in business to succeed, what if you were in the business of success? What if you were in the business of something rather than being in business to? Yeah. And that changes the game because if you're in the business of success, as an example, like a lot of people, you know, I'm a facilitator, access conscious facilitator, I have an access business, I have a facilitation business. No, I'm in the business of facilitation. Yeah. How less definition is there? And now my weird, wacky points of views and however I create in the world, now they can come to fruition in, in that reality, which is really different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, sometimes it's funny because sometimes, you know, um, there are definitely people that would have conversations and say like, oh, you're mincing words or, you know, splitting hairs. And it's like, well, and when we really do look at the nuances – in our language and in our, our speaking patterns. Um, yeah, what else can we become aware of? And how do the words that we use and that we choose um, continue to perpetuate certain mindsets? And just by looking at and, and shifting our, our word usage, how that can actually shift the way that we're moving through and interacting with the world and in the world. Oh, totally, you know, and, and words are hugely creative energies. Um, and the way you put, put it out there in the world and the way you talk to yourself all creates something. Um, yeah. Again, you know, look at what is. It is what, a really great tool and one of the keys to where you are creating in your, in your world is look at what you say. Like really look at what you say and the way you say it. It really, really makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now I am wondering, um, so for people who are watching and they're like, yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool. So <laughs> what are some of the ways that as you've been, um, you know, walking this walk and you've been practicing and you've been also facilitating other people, what are some of your favorite tools for building that muscle of having your own back and trusting yourself in business, in life, in whatever capacity? Yeah. Wow. You know, I always, I'm always a little bit tentative on this one because I kind of choose the hard way. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm a very much uh, rip off the band-aid type of guy. So, um, you know, I'll give you like an example. Like I had a, I had a call center um, years ago in South Africa. It was actually the business I had just before I started facilitating. And it was really successful. But I hated it and I hated the partners. And I literally packed my bag one day and I walked out. I said, give me the papers. I'll sign it all to you. I'm gone. And that's just kind of how I've learned um, for me how to have my own back and trust my own back is by really willing just to let go of everything. And just, oh, man, I don't know. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a big, intense energy to talk about. And it's not easy um, mm -hmm. unless you've really got the tools to work with. But it's like, yeah. it's, you've just got to choose and you've just got to be willing to fail and you've got to be willing to go through that energy like we were talking earlier that's going to feel like your um, survival alarm is ticking. Yes. And when that survival alarm is ticking, that's when you mostly require to keep on walking. Yes. Right, because that all that's trying to do is get you to go back into your old your old self and that if you walk through that, that is where you are. That's where trusting your, your back is through there. Um 
So I'm not sure if I really get quite pragmatic tools, but yeah. yeah. And well, it's, I mean, it's really just a choice. I guess what I hear you saying ultimately is it really just is a choice. And, and thank you, Jennifer. She says, I love that Graham. The willingness to let go of everything is key to fall flat on your face. And it's like, how many times do we take that leap? Do we take, um, you know, do we take that step, even if it's unsure? Um, and when, when we don't die, when we don't even throw up, <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, that's that, you know, that's that little bit of information that, you know, next time the alarm, it may not, you know, it may not sound quite so loudly. And, you know, how many times of, of continuously choosing and choosing and choosing and, and pushing that thermometer yeah. um, higher in terms of what the limit is yeah. um, to the point where it's no longer an alarm to stop you know, it's like the confetti going off and the balloons flying saying, hey, here's another opportunity, another possibility, another, you know, another chance to be able to um, choose something greater. It, and so now it's more of a notification well, it, <laughs> and an invitation. Exactly, exactly. And, and, and what allowed it to be easier for me is um, I, I was um, having a conversation with Shannon O'Hara and she just said to me, she said, you know what? that voice is never going to go away. You cannot destroy it. You cannot fight it, but you can ignore it. And the more you ignore that siren of death, that you will not yeah. survive if you make this choice, which is literally the energy. It's like, Oh, I'm going to die. And everything's going to go away. Yeah. But that yeah. just ignore that voice. Just sit for 10 minutes and be like, okay, cool. Like, you know, when a client yeah. doesn't show up or, for me, like, you know, sometimes classes don't always come, come together so well. And then you kind of like all these voices, oh, what about the money? And then you've got to do this and then you're going to end up on this. If you literally just take 10 minutes and you just, just sit there and you don't buy into it, you just ignore it. Then from there, you'll have a whole different reality available to you. Yeah. Because the minute you catch that, the minute you buy into that voice, it's got you yeah. and you have to start again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's almost, it's funny because I'm just picturing, um, you know, like the, uh, like the, so I have a, um, a hormonal middle schooler <laughs> in my household. <laughs> Very politically and, correct, and, you put. <laughs> yes. And so, you know, sometimes, and it's, and it's actually, it's like, it's not even ignoring, like ignoring doesn't even totally work. I have to acknowledge that it's there. Yes. Correct. I have to acknowledge that it's there, but I, but I don't need to feed into it. Yeah. And I don't need to like make it real. And so letting that 10 minutes pass or whatever of, of allowing whatever, you know, kerfuffle is happening and occurring there and whatever that creation is mm. on the other person's part, you know, just allowing it and like acknowledge it. I mean, I'm not trying to not see it or sure. yeah. you know, pretend it doesn't exist yeah. as much as it's like, okay, and you know, this too shall pass <laughs> yeah. and what's on the other side of it and having the curiosity um, to keep looking at it as things change, knowing that things are continuously and ever changing and evolving. Um, we don't have to ever look at any one point as the fixed point of this is it yeah. forever. Be beautifully put. And, and I love the, what, like the, the energy you use there with curiosity is, ex is exactly that. You know, be curious at what else you're capable of. Like yeah. it's, and you, you have it, you know, and I wrote, I actually wrote a blog, um, which is on the old website, but I actually wrote a blog called The Great Seducer. I, I'll, I might send it to you if you want to po yeah, post. Yeah, we'll put it. We'll put it in the show links. That'd be great. Yeah, and it's it's really about the Great Seducer is the voice of this reality, and the voice of this reality is the one that tells you you can't, you, you it it's wrong, you're wrong, and all that judgment, and that you're not going to survive, and it's exactly that. Once you realize, hey, it's the Great Seducer. Wow, you know, she's really good, but not today, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah, so it really helps. Oh, yeah. I love it. Awesome. So um, 
So we will definitely put that in the show notes. So, um, so if you're listening, you will be able to read that. It sounds great. And I just love, you know, I get this image of like the angel and the devil, you know, on your, on your shoulders. (laughs) Um, but the devil, you know, I mean, she has red heels, yeah, high heels. And And of course she's blonde. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Sure. And, uh, yeah. And just, you know, wanting to tickle you into, um, into things that, um, oftentimes don't really work for us and don't actually create, um, the joyful living or, um, really what we're asking for. So, uh, so yeah, so keeping an eye out for when those red pumps come walking, (laughs) uh, (laughs) so so we don't have to be seduced. I love it. Cool. Well, Graham, uh, to wrap up, is there anything else specific that you would like to put out into the world or invite people to anything you have coming up? Um, yeah. Any invitations to being whatever, <laughs> For what, sure. how, what would you like to share with us to close? Well, look, I, I mean, yeah, it's for me, it really is one of the, it, it's just such a beautiful energy when you can support yourself and, and not stop yourself because of anyone or anything. Right, there's, there's really this, this beauty that's available in you and with you, but you've got to be willing to walk through that valley of death to get there and just know that, <laughs> you know, you're walking through it and just, just don't, don't buy into it. Um, so I would really like that because once, once you're there, it's, it's going to be a whole new world for you. Um, and then, yeah, I've, got a, I've actually just posted a new telecall. I've got a new telecall coming up called Lies. Um, and it's one of the greatest ways that we... We stop our potency um, because we either have to address the lie, prove the lie is a lie, defend against our own lies. There's a whole world in that. So that's there's, there's a two-part yeah. telecall coming up, which will unlock a lot of freedom and, and space for people. So that's cool. the 16th of December, I think. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. So a little freedom for the holidays. Oh, just a little How's bit. How's it getting eh? better than exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Start off 2019 a lot lighter with all that baggage. Yes. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Then we will put the links to that in the show notes as well. Super. And uh, you can find Graham uh, on Facebook. He's on Instagram. Yes. Coming soon, there will be uh, the new website launch. And whenever, um, whenever we have that link, I can always go back and put that in the show notes as well. Yeah, super. So thank you. So thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Graham, for joining us. Thank you, everybody who's watching at home, uh, live, and also in the future. Mm-hmm. I wonder what this can create, what nuggets you will take from the episode, and what you can start playing with and applying in your life right now, yeah. starting in the next second and now and now and now that's right take the risk so i wonder what you'll yes (laughs) take the the risk it's worth it always cool i love it i love it so um so yeah so i wonder what you'll be choosing and creating over the next week we will see you next week again please like the facebook page subscribe to youtube and we'll see you next week i wonder what we'll discover next thanks everybody you've been amazing thank you so much ciao thank you Greg. bye-bye